Hello, welcome to the stream. Today we are going to be looking at the PA4X. This is the flagship arranger of the Korg series. I am very excited to be talking about this. So is this an emergency broadcast? <laughs> exactly. Emergency broadcast from Los Angeles. Coming at you with the PA4X. All right, guys, so we, are, we have a lot to talk about today. Um, we are going to be talking about the modes of the PA4X, some of the sounds, the vocalizer, the songbook, a bunch of features that this thing is very well equipped to do, different ways to record. And as always, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I have some guys on the other end who will be answering those, relaying the information back to me, and I will be able to answer those. So if you have any questions about this arranger, please leave them in the comments. Great, so let me just switch my camera so that you guys don't have to be subjected to my face. Because this is the real beauty here. Great, so this is the PA4X. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with an arranger, an arranger has many different functions, but the main point is that it provides a backing track that allows a band and different instruments to play along with you as you play. And it's separated by register. So basically you can have a band playing that's following the chords that you play in the left half of the keyboard, freeing up your right hand to play melodies and do all sorts of things with the right hands. So the PA4X has four different modes, sound, sequencer mode, song play, and style play. And I do want to talk about all of those just briefly. So let's start with sounds. So sounds is just the basic, the basic category. This provides you with all of the all of the sounds that this arranger has to offer. Anything from piano to guitar, organ, it's all organized in different banks on the side, which you can see here. So if I click on piano, provide you with a bunch of different tabs. So if you click on a sound and you press exit, this allows you to alter the sound, change the cutoff, things like release, decay, attack. You can even have some onboard effects that you can change. So for example, if I wanted to add a little more reverb to this piano, you have your reverb, it's an overb down here. So you can adjust accordingly. Just play this a little bit so you guys can hear this. Uh, also, hello, Greg, Ahmed, Joe, John, Arnaud. Um, forgive me, I'm probably mispronouncing some of your names. Uh, Philip, Joe, hello, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so good to see you. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, so this is very exciting. It's really great to have you guys here. I'm so excited to be talking about this product. So right now we are just talking about sounds. For those of you who are just tuning in, I am adding an effect to my standard piano sound, Concert Grand, and then I'm gonna show you how to save these effects. So if you alter the effects of a piano or any sound for that matter, If I wanted to, I could go up here and I could write that sound and save it to a user bank. So I always recommend if you're gonna change the sound, I, I, I highly recommend not overriding the, the original sound. You can go up here, you have a bunch of different tabs. You'll see something that says user. This is where you can go to save your customized sound. I highly recommend doing that. And then when you're in style play mode and you're calling up these different sounds, you'll be able to access those custom sounds the same way. Hey, Nate, <laughs> say my name, it's Nate. Hello, Nate, I have said your name. Great, I actually wanna just play a couple more sounds for you guys to hear. Thank you. 
Great. So as I mentioned, all these are categorized um, in tabs on the left-hand side, guitar, strings, vocal. It's all separated by that. So it's very intuitive. You can even use uh, over here these styles when we go into style play mode to actually switch between genres right from the uh, control panel, which is a lot easier. And a lot of people prefer it when they are gigging. If there's a uh, low lighting, then you can use these tabs over here to choose those instead. Pretty convenient. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I think we have a request for a guitar sound. Um, like I said, guys, if, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. If you have a request for a certain sound you'd like to hear, I'm happy to do that. So in the guitar tab, we have tons of different sounds and something really interesting called uh, DNC, which is called Dynamic Nuance Control. This is a very cool feature that essentially adds characteristic to the specific instrument that you're using. So for certain things like guitar, if you have a sound that has DNC next to it, You'll see on the left hand side, you might not be able to see this too well. Let me slide this a little bit. Okay, you see right here, these two little lights. This is your DNC button. So if I have a sound, let me pull up a, uh, an acoustic. So this is the standard sound. If you press this key and then hit a note, you get a hammer on. And if you hold the second button, you get the harmonics. So it just gives you an added layer of expression when you're playing with a sound like this. So you, for instance, you could do something like... And of course, with your um, joystick, you have the standard X and Y functions, typically vibrato, pitch shift, things along those lines. And a lot of times you have um, functionality with the ribbon controller, not on every sound, but experiment, especially with synthesizers, the ribbon controller can have a uh, pretty nice function. It'll do things like affecting the envelope or the filter, or it, it's highly dependent on the sound. Great. So moving into things like the synth pads. We have these gorgeously luscious big synth sounds. whole list of ethnic sounds, six pages of them actually. Bass, drums and effects, synths, bunch of sounds. So there's, there's plenty to work with. And as I said on the top, you can access your legacy sounds, sounds from the GM and XG series, 
and your user presets. So as I mentioned before, just to reiterate, this is where you will go if you save any customized sound. Great. OK, that pretty much covers. Um, hey, Carlos. Hey, from Ackworth, Georgia, USA. Hello. Hello from Los Angeles, California. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, hello. My name is Frank Tedesco. We are working with the PA4X today. We've just finished going over the basic sounds. We're moving through to song play. And this is the second mode in the PA4X. And <clears throat> this is where you will access all of the built-in songs that the PA4X has to offer, as well as if you load in your own tunes. So basically, you have two players in the PA4X. You can select the song. Um, from an external flash drive. All you have to do is just click select song. And then under here, under the arrow, if you have a flash drive plugged in, you can load it in right from there. And you can load in a second song onto the other player. So you'll have two loaded at the same time. And then here, you'll see player one and player two. These are your two players. And you have an X fader that you can decide which, which song you'd like to uh, fade the volume to. And then from there, you can just press play. Each player has their own set of controls, fast forward, pause, start at the beginning, stop, and you can select from there as well. So you don't have to actually click here. You can use the buttons as well. I think that's one thing that's really enjoyable about um, this keyboard is that you can, if you're not really a big fan of touchscreen or if you're in a spot where it's kind of hard to see, uh, a lot of the panel buttons actually do the same things as well. So you have an option with that. Uh, speaking of hard to see, you can also change the brightness, which is uh, pretty standard, but very important. We actually get a lot of questions about that. So you can see right here, it says LCD brightness. And, uh, let's see if we have any questions. And I think we got a question uh, somebody asked. I think somebody asked if you can load your own sounds, load each other's sounds. And yes, I believe you can do that. I'm not sure who asked that question. <clears throat> uh, we got a question about EDM sounds. Are there EDM sounds on here? So if we go back into sound mode, factory settings. Um, in fact, I want to save the EDM for the style play. So I, I'll get to that momentarily. Um, but sticking with song play, I do want to talk about songbook. So this is a really exciting mode. When you're in song play, if you go to your songbook, this will give you a list of all of the built-in tunes in the PA4X. And you can categorize them by alphabet, uh, genre, however you'd like, artist. Uh, you can search. There's a filter. So it's it's nice. So if we pick something like, uh, let's see. Let Groove Tonight. I think I know that tune. Let's see. Let groove tonight. So basically, the way it's set up is it will mimic a song with a very close related title. It's it's pretty easy to guess what it is. Let groove tonight. Uh, so you'll probably be able to see as you toggle through a bunch of songs that sound familiar, and it's essentially replicating those tunes. So another important thing about Songbook is if you go to let's pick a different one. Let's do uh, scroll up.
Gangnam Dance. You guys might have might have heard this one around. So a lot of sounds that you're probably familiar with. Uh, you can write new songs. You can add tags to those, add them to a set list. Uh, and your set list, by the way, is down here. So if you look at your songbook and you go to the right of that, you have your set list. This is basically your, your main sounds um, that you can call up at any time. So if you find a song in your songbook that you'd like to have access to immediately, it's essentially what it says. It's a set list for if you're gigging and you need to access these songs. Uh, immediately. It's an easy way to do that. Great. All right. Let me, let me keep up with the chat and also just say hello as well to anybody who's just joining us. Uh, we are talking about the PA4X. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, I'm curious who's watching from Facebook and who's watching from YouTube. Uh, but hello to you all. My name is Frank, and we're looking at the PA4X. We are going over song play. We've covered sounds. We'll be talking about style play and a bunch of other cool things. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Very happy to have you here with us. Great. All right. That covers everything I wanted to talk about with song play mode. Awesome. All right. Uh, we won't, we're not going to talk too much about the sequencer today. It's just a standard sequencer. Um, I don't believe we're going to have time. So I do want to jump into the meat and potatoes, which is style play. So this is the mode where I mentioned earlier in the stream that you have a backing track, a, a band that essentially follows along with your chords in the left half of the register. Hey, Sergey, how are you? And Nye, you're on YouTube. Very nice. All right, so uh, we're in style play mode, guys. I do want to talk a little bit about this. So as I said, this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the arranger. Uh, this is where a lot of these buttons come into handy. So if you look here on the left side, you have uh, all of your styles. So if you click on ballad, ballroom, you'll see a bunch of different genres here. This is essentially where you access your different styles. So before I talk, I'm just going to play something for you guys, just so you can hear a little bit of what this does. Uh, sure, why not? Let's see. Dance tune. Great. So as you can see, follows along with whatever I'm doing in the left hand, leaving me to solo and do whatever I want with my right hand in the right half of the register. So the way that you determine your sounds on the right is by something called keyboard sets. So your keyboard sets are right here. You see these little four buttons? Basically, every style has four keyboard sets. And within each keyboard set, there are four sounds, three upper sounds and one lower sound. So with your first keyboard set, you have a total of three sounds that you can choose individually or you can layer on the top 
and then you'll have one additional sound for the bottom half. And you can change these if you'd like. But so for example, these are the four sets, right? If I click on piano and voice, you will see up here the sounds that comprise that keyboard set, grand piano, synth voices, and another grand piano. Now, if you wanted to change that second grand piano, you just click on it, and then it'll bring you to the sounds category, which you're already familiar with. And you can also access your user saved sounds if you'd like. But for now, we can just do like a xylophone. Click the sound, press exit, unmute it. So now we have a grand piano, synth voices, and xylophone. I actually really like how that sounds. Very nice. But if I didn't like the way it was layered, you have these tabs on the bottom where you can adjust the volume. So this is where you essentially adjust the mix of your layers. And you can even adjust things like the split point and a few other things. But that's the idea with keyboard sets. So that's your first keyboard set. Um, it's labeled piano and voice. If I go to brass, it'll be a, a brass oriented keyboard set. Same thing with organ and same thing with synth lead. But it's really nice because a lot of times the keyboard sets, they'll try to, um, they'll fit the style that it's, that it's playing with. So if I have something in dance, of course, there's going to be things like synth, piano and voice and organ. But if I go to something maybe in the jazz category, you have piano, trumpet, tenor sax, sax and brass. So it's all geared towards the genre of the style that you're playing in. And just jotting to see any questions that we have. Uh, Piotr asks, what about future of PA Korg PA series? I actually don't have any information on that. Uh, just stay tuned. Keep up to date with Korg social media. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not too knowledgeable on that field. I'm just the PA guy, you know? Uh, so anyway, tagging back to the style play, when you're in style play mode, similar to how when you're in sounds, you have your genres all over the side as well. So as I mentioned, you can either use the buttons over here or you can use the touchscreen. It's just complete preference. So let's play another, let's play another style just so you guys can uh, hear what's going on. So before I start, I do want to talk a little bit about ways to alter a style because we get a lot of questions about this. Um, essentially, you have the different elements of a song broken up and organized on the, uh, in the navigation area. So you have your intro. These are different ways that the song can start when you press start. Uh, one meaning it's going to be a very long intro. Two is a shorter intro, and then three is just a count in, a four measure or a four beat, excuse me, four beat count in. You have different variations, and this essentially means it's just different levels of intensity for the verse and the chorus. So it'll add more instruments and build up in volume, just like how a normal song would. You have different drum fills of different intensities. You have a drum break, which it'll just break all volume, and then different endings. And it works the same way as the intros, it gradually gets less intense as you go up. And let's see, along with that, you have these things called pads, which add an extra layer to, to the mix. So if I have something going on, let's just play something real quick. Uh, let me find a different style. How about something like this? Okay, so turn this down so you can hear me. So I have this style playing. If you use these pads, they'll give you a little ornamentation, just little things that you can press to kind of liven it up. Get a little piano gliss, a cymbal. So things like that, just all ways to give you different options to customize the sound and play it exactly how you'd like to. It's very neat, I really like the pads. And then you can stop anything with the stop button in terms of the pads. 
up here, you have your basin version. I do want to talk about this really briefly because I get a lot of questions about this. Um, if when you're playing something in style play mode, you'll notice that uh, originally, you see it's not recognizing these chord inversions. I'm playing a C minor chord, but even when I have a G in the bass, the bass is still playing C. So this is what bass inversion does. Press bass inversion, and now it'll support any inversion you play. So I highly recommend using that. And then manual bass is really fun because when you're playing a tune, if you press manual bass, all melodic elements will drop and only the percussion will stay. And then you're free to use a bass to do a bass solo if you'd like. So for example, if I was playing this, or you know what, even better, if I go into song play mode and let's see if there's a, go to songbook and I want to do B Jean is not. I can you guys guess what song that is? All right, so as I said, we have B gene is not. So if I'm playing, uh, let's see. Right. Uh, so if I wanted to have like a little bass solo, you can just press manual bass and do something like this. And then right back in. So it's fun, just a little way to vary it up a little bit. That is Billy Jean. Good job, Sergey. Great. Yes, this is a uh, this is an arranger. The PA is an arranger, Josh. All right, give me one second, please. All right, another thing I did want to talk about, because we had a question about EDM before. So this works very nicely with what's called chaos. So let's, uh, let's find something. Something a little on the techno side. All right, so if we have something like this, right? Down here, we're in style play mode. Down here, you'll see chaos. Now, chaos is very awesome. Chaos is essentially, it's almost like a little a DJ station where you can manipulate the sound in many, many different ways. There are a lot of different elements to this. So when you're in chaos, you'll be able to do things like um, you'll have repeaters, you'll have tripletizers, half doublings, endings, different types of endings, bending the pitch, LFO, uh, a bunch of different options. So if I'm playing something like this, okay. 
If I wanted to hit the tripletizer, check out this. It actually alters the entire style to uh, a triplet time signature, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and I really, really like that. So essentially the way that the chaos works is you have, it's kind of like an X, Y grid. And if you see down here, it'll tell you exactly what those parameters do. So the arrow to the right is for tripletizer. And then as you go up, you'll get the cutoff and resonance. And it'll only be active as long as you're touching the screen unless you hold shift. So if I hold shift and then press somewhere, it'll actually freeze. And then you can just, you can feel free to play with both hands in whatever sort of chaos option you're at. So let's take a look at a couple more of these. Uh, I'm gonna change my style. So I'm gonna go to keyboard set, click on there, and maybe we'll go into, let's see what we got here. Let's see, dance pop. This is a good one. All right, so in a very techno heavy sound, um, I want to pick which keyboard set I want. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, so I don't really like this organ. So I'm going to mute that. I could change it, but I think it's a big enough sound with just the fat synth and the rhythmical synth. So I'm going to go back into chaos. And now you're free to play your style. And now we can check out some of the other uh, presets here. I'm just going to I'm just going to mess around with a few of these so you guys can hear the sorts of things that it does. Pretty cool. Really makes you feel like a DJ. Uh, so that was called Dance Pop. And that is essentially what Chaos does. And I would highly, highly advise you to go in and check out all of these. I don't know if you guys can see this well. I think you can. Here, let me lower this brightness just a little bit. There are so many options in Chaos. I think Chaos personally is one of my favorite parts of the PA4X. It is so much fun. It really, it's such a hands-on thing and it's just, it's just a blast. So I highly recommend checking that out. Um, as I said, guys, if you have questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, we have some guys on the other end who are happy to answer those. And if I see some that I know, I will answer those as well.
Uh, we got a question from Daniel. He asks, can the keyboard be split in three sections? Uh, the PFRX can split into two sections. Yeah, and having an upper section and lower section. So instead of three sections, the way it's done is you have two sections here, but the top register can be layered three different times. I went over this a little bit earlier, but just to recap, anytime you're in a style, you have your upper voice one, two, and three, and then your lower voice, and that makes up your first keyboard set. So essentially for every style, you have four keyboard sets, and within those keyboard sets, you have four sounds, three of which are for the upper that can be layered. And you can adjust the layer volume of those under volume and your mic in, you can adjust the lower sound. So this is where you'd actually adjust. So if I wanted to say lower. And so by default, the split point is always going to be uh, the third C, C3. So you can change that, though, if you'd like. Under split, you can either press a different note or toggle it manually. Totally up to you. Um, I usually like to keep it on C, but depending on what you're doing, uh, you can have it wherever you'd like. Uh, let me see, guys. Give me one sec. I'm just jotting through the comments to say hello, see what's going on. Great. How are we doing on time? All right. We still got some time. Um, as I said, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. If you're just tuning in, hello. We are going over the PA4X Arranger. This is our flagship arranger. We've talked about sounds, sequencer mode a little bit, song play, style play. Uh, I do want to briefly talk about the uh, vocalizer and uh, the different harmonies that you can do and all of those sorts of things. So I actually do have a secondary mic uh, that I will be using for this. So the PA4X um, uses the, uh, the TC Helicon technology to create this awesome, awesome vocoder. And it's actually extremely easy to set up. On the back, you, there's an XLR uh, input, but it also doubles as a quarter inch input as well. So I have a secondary microphone right here, which I will be using to uh, just show you what it is. I'm not a singer, so have your earplugs nearby. But essentially, if you wanna set this up, it's very simple. You just go to global down here. Oh, let me go into, uh, hang on a sec. So you click on global. And down here, you'll see a couple different tabs. This is where you can do things like video out. You can actually project this onto a different screen if you have like lyrics or score, um, which is very cool. That, that's just a side note though. So under here, just to reiterate, video out. If you have lyrics, you can import lyrics or score onto here and then output it to a different monitor, an external monitor. So different options for your players for in song play mode. Um, couple few different things, but we're looking at the audio in. So this is where you change from line in to your mic. So depending on the microphone that you use, the PA4X will provide you with phantom power. But uh, for now, I have a mic um, which is good without that. So once you have that set up, once you have your mic input set up, you need to go over here to your mic voice section and you'll click on mic. And now hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, the quality may be a little bit different. I, you can probably hear some reverb. Uh, retro gaming systems. Uh, I think we did get a question about uh, Chaos Later repair service. Uh, oh yeah, for re repair services and stuff, just visit, uh, there's a link that will be sent to locate a Korg authorized service that's close to you. So definitely check that out. Okay, so I have my secondary microphone. This microphone is plugged in directly to 
uh, the PA4X. So now I have microphone on. What I want to do is click on preset, this button right next to mic. You adjust your volumes accordingly up here. See microphone volume. Click on preset. And now you have a bunch of different presets for your harmonizer. And you're not going to hear it right now because I have harmony turned off. But if I go down here, uh, let's see, go to style play. Let's do right here. So now, so now, now you should be able to hear, hear the vocoder. Thanks for watching the stream. So two up, one down plus octave. It's just telling you which additional voices are being added to the mix. So you have one, two octaves up and then one octave down. There's two octaves up, one down. There's one octave up, two down. Uh, there's there's tons, tons. A bass man, which I believe is just... Hello? <laughs> Testing. This is just a low. Essentially just a low voice. I, I really recommend experimenting with these. Uh, my favorite personally is the two up, one down. It's very full sound, but um, lots of stuff. So when you have this set up, essentially this is where the chord scan becomes very important. And we get a lot of questions about this. So when you have something, uh, when you have a preset chosen and you have the harmony turned on, you can even turn doubling on. Which will make it a big sound. The chord scan is really important because this is how the PA4X is recognizing which notes to add to uh, the harmonizer. So since I have upper on, when I hit a chord on the top half of the keyboard, then it will recognize my voice and not on the lower half. If you want it to recognize on the lower half, you just click lower. And so now, even if I hit a chord up here, you see it's not active, but when I hit it down here, it is active, and this is the way that many people use it. Oh, yeah. Alternatively, uh, excuse me, alternatively, you can have both of them turned on. So this way, it'll scan for notes throughout the entire register of the keyboard. So it just totally depends on what you're looking to do. And then, of, of course, you can adjust the different volumes of the harmony, uh, the mic volume. So if you're not if you're not the best vocalist in the world, uh, as I'm not, then you can kind of get away with lowering the mic volume a little bit and blasting the harmony so that the, the auto-tune notes are kind of the prominent voices. Uh, that's what I do, but don't tell anyone. I think we got a question um, about the drum sound. Somebody wants to talk about drum sounds a little bit. I think that's a good idea. Let me switch over to my original microphone. Okay. And we are back. So the drum sounds. We go back into sound mode. Go to your factory settings. You'll see on the bottom right hand, you have your drums and effects. So that's pop kit. Let's just play around with that a little bit. So now you actually have access to a bunch of stuff within your drum kit, all your layers. So this is really cool. So I, I was in menu mode, clicked in menu mode after I'm on my drum sound. And then this is where you can actually customize every single sound within a drum, within a, a, a drum sound. 
So as you click on it, uh, I think hopefully you guys can see this. Let me lower the brightness. Okay. So with your drum sounds here, uh, for the person who asked, um, anytime you click a note, the parameters for that specific sound, so in this case, a cowbell, you have everything that comes up right here. So you can see the title here. This is where you can adjust things like the attack, the decay, you can transpose it. Um, you can even EQ the entire drum sound separately. You have a low, mid, and a high. So it's just a three bend EQ. Pretty standard stuff. And then of course you can save that. You can either, either overwrite the current drum sound or if you'd like, you can save it as a new one, which I always recommend doing um, and just save it to your user bank, which is up here, top tab on the right, your user bank. And it's very cool because essentially when you think about it, the styles are just comprised of sounds. So if you wanted to replace a style, like one of the sounds in your styles, you're essentially grabbing it from sound mode. So when you're pulling sounds into style play, you'll have access to anything that you make in sound mode. And uh, the, one of the last things I did want to mention briefly is recording. So there are a few different ways to actually record on the PA4X. You can see right here, there's a record button. If you just tap it once uh, while you're in style play mode, Hang on, let me, let me get it out of here. So if I just, if I am working with a style, let's say something country. Sure, and I'm like. I'm like, oh, I really like that. I would like to record it. There are a couple different ways you can. It depends on the level of uh, customization you need. But if you're just looking to record an MP3, just record it as it is and then export it to a flash drive. Instead of tapping the record button, you can actually hold it down. You'll see in red font, it says MP3 record. If you hold this down, a screen will come up and you can choose the quality and you can choose where to save it. So you can either save it to Korg's disk, or if you have a flash drive inserted, you can choose that option as well. And then as soon as you finish recording, so if I record something. Gorgeous, I press stop, and I wanna save this and share it with the world. What I can do is you name it, so you can name it whatever you'd like, press okay. And then this is where you can choose where to save it. So right now I don't have a flash drive plugged in, so the only place I can save it is disk. But if you'd like, you can choose your flash drive and then press save. Uh, I'll press cancel because I don't want to actually save that. And then a few different ways you can record. You can do a quick record. You can do a step quick record, which is when you'll record in parts separately. And um, those are some of the main ways to do that. Another thing you can do if you have a, a uh, MIDI file, standard MIDI file on a flash drive is you can actually import those onto the PA4X and the PA4X will convert that MIDI file to a style, which you can then customize and save as well. And when you do something like that, we're, we don't have time to go over that today, unfortunately, but um, let us know if you guys would like to see um, a stream that is more geared towards MIDI files and, and things of that sort. But for now, when you have something loaded in and you customize and save it, you'll also be saving that to your user bank. So this is where you'll save those styles as well, which you can access at any time. I mean, just jot through the comments and 
see if we have any final questions. We are just about out of time, but um, it's really been great having you guys here. Um, I hope that most of your questions have been answered by either me or the other guys that we have working um, to answer those. Alrighty, guys, that is all the time we have today. Um, I do want to thank each and every one of you. Well, I'm not going to thank each and every one of you because we will be here for a lot longer. But um, let me switch back my camera so you guys uh, can see me. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you guys for being here. This was a lot of fun. I hope I was able to provide you with more details about what this thing is capable of. We actually just barely scratched the surface. You know, there's I wish I could cover everything in an hour, but uh, do let us know if you'd like to see more about this. I would be happy to do that personally. Um, there's a lot more to talk about for sure. Um, and yeah, you can also follow me on my social media stuff if you have questions about this or anything else Korg related or you just wanna say hello. Um, it's Tedesco Creations. My last name is Tedesco, T-E-D-E-S-C-O, Creations on all platforms, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff, if you're interested. Uh, but also, please be sure to check out Korg's streams on Facebook every Wednesday. So next Wednesday, there'll be somebody different, not me. So um, I hope you'll be around to tune in for that. And um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. And uh, I will see you at some point next time. Hope you enjoyed.